subcommittee. Okay. And you may begin. Okay. <clears throat> and I just want to remind you, I limit you to two minutes. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. My name is Renette Senum, and I'm a current city council member and former mayor of Nevada City, California. And I speak with you as an elected official and as an early adopter of wireless technology as I had opened the first cellular phone store in Nevada County in 1990. However, I've learned enough about 5G technology that I cannot support its expansion, particularly not SB 649. So today I speak about this bill through the eyes of local authority. Our local governments typically encourage new technology based on claims that will improve the quality of life for its businesses and residents. However, this proposal goes too far by requiring local government to approve these small cells, macro cells, and large power supplies in all land use zones, including private property, barring the public from decisions that will dramatically adversely affect the aesthetics of community, property values, property tax, and quality of our constituents' health and environment. Simply put, SB 649 is a Pandora's box for California cities, one that blatantly strips local government of the authority to protect the quality of life of our residents, their environment, and the public right away. The de facto exemption of CEQA sets a very dangerous precedent, opening the door for any other industry to annihilate a local government control in order to, to deploy any kind of corporate undertaking without public or elected officials' consent or lease agreement of publicly owned property, a dangerous condition of public property. The SB 649 utilizes eminent domain for its hostile takeover of our communities and is unconstitutional. The 5G network is being deployed with very limited standards, no monitoring, and without protective agency oversight. It is also a violation of the Federal Americans with Disabilities Act. Governments and representatives, including assembly members and myself, have a responsibility to protect the quality of life of our constituents, protect public property and the public right of way, and stop this corporate overreach. This bill throws every human, even our honeybees, our birds, our agriculture, our animals, and our wildlife under the bus for unabated control of our communities by the telecom industry. Lastly, Senator Hueso has stated numerous times that this is what the telecom industry customers want. Time's up, ma'am. But Californians know not to, to uh, pass this and to reject it. Thank you very much. My name is Gerald Mitchell. I live in Rockland, California. Distinguished hearing members, I first want to thank you for taking on this serious public health issue. I was a company CEO, and uh, Yahoo Finance named me one of the top 100 marketing minds in America. After holding a cell phone to my right temple, temple for several hours a day, I began having headaches, and subsequently a lemon-sized tumor was found. When they went in, you'll notice the black area there of my brain. That is a GBM brain tumor. It also took down Edward Kennedy, Joe Biden, and your dear associate, Ira Ruskin. According to the experts at UCSF, there is no remission once you have one of these. I live with a daily fear that self-service self radiation will induce recurrent growth and take my life. A tower outside my home is disastrous for me. I have the ability to turn off my cell phone, but I can't control a highly powerful cell tower nearby my home that generates a very strong signal 24-7. Ladies and gentlemen, the evidence is already overwhelming. New studies are emerging weekly. These, these transmissions cause cancer. You're already in the crosshairs of the media and it's growing 30 daily. In summary, ladies and gentlemen, your positions require great courage. I hope that you safeguard the constituents that you represent. 649 is not the answer, but I'm confident that you'll find it. You'll, you'll come up with a creative solution that l allows continued monitoring by communities as part of the regulatory process. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you. Time's up. Thank you. I can remind everybody two minutes, and I'll remind you at the 30-second mark. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good afternoon, Chair, members of the committee. Ronnie Berdugo here on behalf of the League of California Cities. Uh, and over 215 cities officially opposed to SB 649. That number keeps climbing. Uh, the SACB, LA Times, San Francisco Chronicle, San Jose Mercury News, uh, and other major papers in the state, uh, Real News, uh, have weighed in against this bill as well, and here's why. 
Uh, SB 649 makes at least three key changes to existing law, uh, the following two of which are unprecedented. Uh, the first thing, it forces cities and, and counties to lease out their public property for wireless equipment uh, essentially everywhere within our boundaries. That's, that's unprecedented. We've never been asked to do that as local governments. The second thing that the bill does, which is equally unprecedented, is, is it eliminates uh, the ability for local governments to lease out uh, their public property space uh, at market rates. Uh, and instead, it places a $250 cap uh, on what they call uh, a, a, an attachment charge uh, for, for the small cell installation. By eliminating discretionary permits, the third key change this bill makes is equally troubling and sweeping because A, it eliminates public input uh, by using encroachment and building permits instead of discretionary ones. Uh, B, it eliminates discretion for cities to impose conditions uh, for public benefits. It specifically prohibits in-kind conditions for issuing a, a permit, uh, such as free Wi-Fi in public parks, as a condition of the permit. Uh, and then C, it eliminates the ability to remove equipment that is blighting uh, your neighborhoods. Even if every single resident within your jurisdiction complained about a particular small cell, there's no recourse in this bill to take that, uh, that particular uh, piece of equipment down. 30 seconds. These permitting changes are significant because the bill allows for antennas as large as six cubic feet, associated ground-mounted equipment, uh, totaling a whopping 35 cubic feet or the size of a commercial refrigerator, with no size or quantity limitations for what they call ancillary equipment. Cities have a responsibility to protect our public property and to condition fair use over taxpayer assets. Unlike the wireless industry, cities not, are not driven by profit, but by the public services that we strive to deliver, such as police, fire, uh, infrastructure, and parks. Despite promises made by the wireless industry, this bill does nothing to require the technology meet 5G, that it gets deployed to unserved and underserved areas of the state, and that those cost savings are passed on to their customers. The bill is a clear Time's overreach. Uh, want to urge your vote, your, uh, strongly urge your no vote on this bill. Good afternoon. My name is Sandy Maurer. I'm the director of the EMF Safety Network. We are strongly opposed to SB 649 based on the science of wireless harms. Over-the-counter permits would eliminate local review and deregulate the telecom industry. Who will oversee and ensure compliance with the rules of this bill and with FCC and other laws? SB 649 abandons the public to trust the telecom industry to certify radiation safety. Please address this lack of oversight and the health implications of putting cell towers in every neighborhood. The technology of the future that would enable faster and more secure connections and be more protective of public health and nature needs to be wired. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Ellen Marks. I'm director of the California Brain Tumor Association. Few that spoke in support of this know the science, know the victims like I do. We focus on prevention of primary brain tumors, which are sadly dramatically increasing in young people with the ubiquitous use of cell phones and an increase in cellular facilities. There are thousands of independent, not industry funded, but independent studies showing a correlation between cellular radiation from towers and serious health effects, including cancer, neurological damage, and a lot of different things. The $25 million United States National Toxicology Program study released this year found that 2G radiation causes brain tumors and tumors near the heart. We do not advocate against this technology, yet we must find a better solution to balance the need for technology and save our most precious resource of all, human life. The American Academy of Pediatrics has expressed concerns to the FCC that children, and that could be your children, my children, my grandchildren, are especially vulnerable to this radiation. Few here, I said before, know the science like I do. This could happen to us. Please do not risk that this happened. Think tobacco and asbestos. And when you hear this industry speak, they are using the tobacco playbook. Please do not let that be your legacy, I beg of you. Thank you for your consideration. Hi, my name is Antoinette Stein, Environmental Health Trust. And this is California, and I live in Berkeley, California. Please don't sell our children short. This is um, uh, the disadvantaged communities and equity issues that we have. You're a communications uh, committee, and you all know that what we really, really, really need is graphics. This broadband and these 
mobile wireless is not going to be secure, accurate, reliable, and able to support the GIS. I have a PhD in environmental engineering. We really, really need the graphics. We need to build out our fiber, and we need to put people to work in fiber and not have this frivolous, clutter, foolish, short-sighted schlock. It doesn't belong in California. Thank you. Mary Beth Brangan, the Executive Director of the Ecological Options Network, E.ON. And uh, we want safer, more reliable fiber optics and a moratorium on this push for 5G infrastructure to allow more understanding of the science of the adverse health effects. It's out there. People haven't heard about it yet because of suppression, because of the um, telecoms using the tobacco uh, industry's playbook. So please vote no and let us approach this more sensibly.